Let us begin. Sitting down. And setting aside everything else. So you can pay attention to what is here and now. When I say set things aside, set everything else that had happened in your life so far, or today morning, yesterday, last year. It set that aside. Or things might yet happen. Or not set that aside. Life happens only here and now. And we get distracted. By thinking about what had happened or what might yet happen. Instead, we simply attend to life happening here and now. The extraordinary thing about life is that it is available all the time in this current moment. And we are always distracted. We are always worrying about what had happened or what might happen. Some of them could be pleasurable. are hopeful. And yet. Even pleasurable thoughts or memories. Are hopeful wishes. Are not what is right now as part of your life. What is right now is your body sitting comfortably. Breathing. And you have the capacity to observe. Life as it happens. Always. It happens right now. This breath. Palms to the heart center. Namaskar Mantra. Tilt your head forward. Let's take a resolution to spend the next hour or so. Paying attention to life as it happens. Every moment, every breath. Gently open your eyes. Inhaling, arms by the side, going up. Looking up, arms pressing. Exhaling, palms coming down to the chest, looking down at the fingers, inhaling up. Exhaling down. 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 One last round. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Release. Um, just one last comment about thoughts. Thoughts are not bad. Thoughts by themselves 
they are more like problem solving routines. They, it's a tool. And we go to Mars and look under a rock with thoughts. We build rocket ships, we build pyramids, Taj Mahal. Um, we build the internet. All of that coming out of thoughts. And so nothing wrong with thoughts per se. But just like a like a knife as a tool. When used properly, it can use to cut an apple or cook. Um, when used wrongly, it distracts us and traps us forever in some unreal past or future, distracting us from right now. And the practice on the mat is to pay attention to life. Not just now, even off the mat. Cat posture. <clears throat> Inhaling, look up. Exhaling, look down, arch your back up. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Three more rounds. After completing, come to neutral posture. Now we are going to do the same thing a bit quicker. So keep pace with me. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, look up. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And neutral posture. Right leg to the back. Right knee down. Left leg to the back. Left knee down. Right leg back and up. Look up. Inhale. Exhaling, bring the knee to the nose. Inhaling, leg going back and up. Look up. Exhaling, knee to the nose. Three more rounds. Keep the right toes off the mat as you bring the right knee to the nose. Closer to the nose is fine. You're still warming up, no pushing, no aggression. You're warming up after completing five rounds total. Take a deep breath, exhale. Left leg back and up, look up. Exhaling, knee to the nose. Inhaling, left leg back and up. Exhaling, knee to the nose. Three more rounds. After completing, place your elbows on the mat and fold your forearms together. Forearms, you catch your elbows together. Catch your left elbow with the right palm and vice versa, and place the forehead on the folded arms. 
and you can slightly move your seat bones back and allow the chest to go down just a bit. Deep inhalations and complete exhalations. Full inhale and exhale abdomen tight going fully inward. Five rounds. You should feel your abdomen fully tight as you exhale. And after completing neutral cat posture. What we just did is, is the very beginning of an inversion with, with the brain below the heart. The mildest of inversions, proning. We talked about this is one of the ways to do proning. To also help in full exhalations. You can also do forceful exhalations <clears throat> like in Kapalapati, but uh, you can explore full inhalations and full exhalations uh, in that posture. Adho Mukeshwanasana. Right foot forward. Left foot forward. Hands on the waist. Inhaling, come up. Release arms. Just so we are fully warmed up. Let's do one more practice to fully warm up. Um, legs together, feet together, hands on your waist. Bring the right knee up. And straighten the right leg forward. And raise the entire leg up. You should feel your right quad muscles engaged, abdomen engaged. Five, four, three, two, one. Bend the knee and place the foot down. Take a deep breath, exhale. Left knee up. Straighten the left leg forward and bring the entire leg just a bit up until you you should feel the quad muscles on the left thigh top engaged five. Four. Three. Two. One bend the knee and place the foot down. Release the arms stand relaxed. Three deep breaths, preparing for Surya Namaskara, six rounds. Front of the mat. We will do three rounds and then take a minute to catch our breath and then three more rounds. Are there any questions? Few of you joined recently. Are there any particular questions about Sri Namaskara practice before we get started with six rounds? Namaskara Mantra. Inhaling back bend. Exhaling forward. Inhaling right. Left. Exhale, Ashtanga Namaskara. Inhale, Bujanga. Exhale, Adhomukha. Inhale, right foot forward. Exhale, left foot. Inhale, back. Exhale, Namaskara Mudra. 
take a deep breath exhale inhale back exhale forward inhale left right exhale inhale exhale inhale left exhale right inhale back exhale namaskar udra one round take a deep breath exhale inhale back exhale forward inhale right left exhale inhale exhale inhale right exhale left inhale back exhale namaskar take a deep breath inhale back exhale forward inhale left right exhale inhale exhale inhale left Exhale right. Inhale. Exhale Namaskaram. Two rounds. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale right. Left. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale. Exhale Namaskaram Pura. Take a deep breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale left. Right. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale left, exhale right. Inhale back, exhale Namaskarantra. Release the arms. Allow the breath to flow. You can probably count 15 breaths. After completing 15 breaths, Come back to Namaskaram Tra. You're not controlling the breath, allow the breath. Let's be begin next three rounds. Namaskaram Tra. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale right. Left. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale. Exhale, Namaskara Mudra. Take a deep breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale left. Right. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale back. Exhale, Namaskaram Udra, fourth round. Take a deep breath. Inhale back. Exhale. Inhale right. Left. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale. 
Exhale, Namaskar Mudra, take a deep breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale left, right. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale. Exhale, Namaskar Mudra. Take a deep breath, exhale, five rounds. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale right. Left. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale right. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, take a deep breath. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale left. Right. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale left. Right. Inhale. Exhale, Namaskar Mudra. Release the arms, six rounds. Stand relaxed. Allow the breath on its own to come back to normal. And if you are able to feel the rhythm of your heart, allow it to come back down to normal. <clears throat> Three D breaths. before we proceed with few postures. Are there particular postures in Surya Namaskara that are challenging? And uh, you feel like there is some imbalance or you are feeling too uncomfortable, anything like that? Please unmute your uh, phone or uh, laptop. If you ask a question that might actually benefit others who might also have similar question. If you are wondering, others might also be wondering. Yeah, um, Jay, one question on the uh, inhale, right? Um, should it be always the the belly portion should come out at the end of the inhale? Is that the right? That that's very yeah. That's a okay. good way to inhale. Okay. Um, some might have a habit of sucking in the belly belly as they inhale. That is wrong. So as you inhale. Breathe into the abdomen. And so when you breathe into the abdomen, the belly comes out a bit, yes. And that's quite okay. The belly relaxes and comes out 
the bottom of the rib cage expands and sometimes the top of the chest expands depending on how deeply deeply you breathe but the minimum thing is you breathe into the abdomen so thank you rameshwara any other questions from anybody else jay one question uh, when we move from actually i'm not able to match the timings between uh, you and the way i do like um, from bhujangasana to adhomukhasana we move right so uh, between those three positions i am unable to match the timings i am always uh, see that uh, in this especially today i noticed that i was lagging a little bit uh, yeah. with your speed yeah uh, that's quite okay that's quite okay that's that is why i said earlier on the pace that i said might feel slow for some <laughs> um and um, faster for some and so if it is faster for you you do at your pace okay then. okay ji thank you yeah don't um, feel compelled as i said if some people finish 24 namaskara in half hour but others take 45 minutes so be it okay uh, this is bharat here uh, yes. just an observation like uh, i had mentioned uh, i was doing this surya namaskara about 15 days back before joining this before joining this uh, remote session okay and uh, i was i was kind of forcing myself to do it or uh, kind of feeling resistive to go to the next steps mm. but then last week when you taught me the breathing and the namaskaras i'm effortlessly able to go to the next step seamlessly and i'm not feeling tired which which i understood that breathing and the postures are very important so that so we can effortlessly go from one post to the other absolutely that's the observation i just wanted to inform thank you so much for a very important observation um, and uh, this is the difference between exercise gymming and uh, yoga practice um in gymming and regular exercise there is more distraction and more energy or maybe that is what we are trying to do lose energy or build muscles to look good and such but here the focus is entirely different it is about um it is about uh, aligning to how we are designed um, and so as we move in fact as i observed even that we move to aid in inhaling or exhaling so thinking in those terms might also be beneficial and so your your observation is very key and if done well over a period of time at the end of surya namaskara you don't feel too tired i mean you'll be you'll feel energized and hot but not really tired um to the extent that you're feeling tired um there are there may be more aggressive you might be taking more aggressive back bends when you are not able to or more aggressive postures might make you lose some of the energy and so being present for every breath every posture and every transition you would feel a lot of energy without feeling tired and so thank you for sharing yeah Dr. thank you others sir i had a question uh, uh, today i observed that you know my throat got totally dry is it because of mouth breathing okay very good question priya um always breathe through the nose okay and if you are breathing through the mouth close please don't please close your mouth um all hatha yoga practice requires you to breathe except for few pranayama practices shitali shitkari few um require you to use your mouth to breathe in or out yeah 
the rest of the time, time i observed that <laughs> mm. so yeah. do you blow or when do you breathe out through the mouth or breathe into the mouth no i don't know why it got like totally dry i'm just uh, guessing it should be because of my mouth breathing that's all mm. so please good good observation see that is awareness right the fact that you observed that after the practice your mouth is dry you are becoming increasingly aware that's great and that also gave us opportunity to reiterate that breathing is always through the nose breathing in and out through the nose always yeah i just wanted to add a point uh, like what bharat told just uh, yes yes uh, yes i have observed in myself you know when we complete uh, yoga or after surya namaskara more than feeling tired i'm feeling more fresh good so good very good just to add that point yeah very good thanks thanks for uh, confirmation and that means you are um, aligned and breathing right thank you sir thank you sir jai this is ragnath i have yes. a question hmm. uh, earlier i uh, like before the jain and yoga at least hmm. uh, last one month i i, I started um, watching or uh, attending these classes okay. earlier i used to play badminton and i was sweating a lot hmm. now because of lockdown i am not playing and just hmm. practicing yoga alone hmm. so do we need to sweat because i with yoga i don't see i am sweating yeah yeah do we um, need to do some other uh, uh, activity to get the sweat or just doing yoga is fine um, uh, why do you, uh, so there is a there is a certain satisfaction from gymming and other practices that sweating is is a way toward health <laughs> sweating is not bad but sweating is um, not a precondition for improving health okay uh, you i need to ha- i need to sweat it out and that is how i get to better health is um not exactly the only way forward um health you can achieve with uh, yoga pra- yoga practice and uh, sudin malali i don't know if he is or even uh, many people who are doing badminton and others they will get the benefit of yoga practice There's the performance in the, when you do get back to badminton you will feel better <laughs> oh okay then we will see after lockdown yes yeah, uh, sure. i'll start practicing sure <laughs> okay, thank you absolutely and uh, several uh, can vouch for it including sunil who is not on the call i think um good uh the good ragnata any any other questions uh, or observations before we proceed um so this is amita here yes uh, so j i find it a little difficult by, while transitioning from adhomukha to bringing my foot forward yes uh, uh, sometimes my hand my goes off the mat and i find it very difficult to do that so do you have any tips yes. for doing good good question good question i i one of the things that i thought <laughs> one of you should raise is exactly this question so i remember in the practice session that we did last monday i said if you're not able to bring the foot forward in one step drop both the knees down put one foot forward between the palms and then raise the other knee up hmm. can you try that now yeah. can can we all try that just so maybe manjit and um, sanjay can also demonstrate adhomukha uh, sir is it okay to go to shashanka and then go to the ashva sanchalana uh, that is another step then you will breathe in and out there right mm. then we extra you are adding to that i mean that's what you are perhaps you are used to that you can do that but that's another breath full breath cycle okay okay uh, but here so now you are in adhomukha i say inhaling right foot forward right inhaling r- knees down slowly inhale and then right foot forward and then left knee up all of this you do in inhalation 
and then exhaling left foot forward. Hands on the waist, inhaling, come up. Uh, Amita, can you try this? Uh, yes, uh, Jay, this seems, uh, I was doing it uh, along with your instructions. Now I'm watching, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay and Manjit now. Uh, this seems pretty easy now to do. Good. Yeah. Uh, I, um, I don't want you to introduce another breath cycle unless you are really need to. Um, so from Adomuka, I say inhaling right foot forward. You slowly start inhaling. Drop both the knees, right foot forward, left knee off, and then you complete the inhalation. In fact, as you complete the Ashwasan Chalana, I don't know how many of you observed, you can breathe in more. Let's try that. Um, uh, Thadasana. Adhoamukha. So come back to Adhoamukha. I want you to observe if you can inhale a bit more as you finish up um, Ashwa with uh, looking up your head coming up, inhaling right foot forward. And as you finish, see if you can inhale more. Left foot forward, exhale. Hands on the waist, inhaling, come up. Release. Were you able to see that you are able to inhale a bit more as you finished up? Uh, yes, I could sense that, Jay. Yes. And so, see, we have 6,006 6 liters of uh, capacity. <laughs> okay. Our normal breathing is half a liter. Let me repeat. <laughs> We have a lot, we have a big tank, right? Our, um, our uh, lungs are big tanks actually, but we uh, take when we, normal breathing is about half a liter. And so there is a lot of room and positioning your chest and looking up as you finish Ashwas and Chalana gives you access to more of the capacity that you already have. It's not that it is just getting something just from the practice, it is already there. It is just that um, you can move in a way to allow deeper inhalation or a deeper exhalation. That is just an example. So Amita, so you can always drop the knees forward, but keep the breath coordination um, going. Hmm? OK, Jay. thank you. Sure. Uh, other questions? Uh, hi, Jay. Akila yeah. here. Yes. Uh, after completing uh, Ashwa Sanchalana and Plank, uh, like we have mm. to exhale, right? Uh, I feel some more difficulty in that exhalation. Like uh, I'll be inhaling instead of exhaling. Oh, for, uh, uh, for Ashtanga Namaskara? Yes, yes, yes. That is because uh, is it that in plank itself you've ex exhaled? No, in plank I'll be in inhaling uh, position and uh, no, I, I feel... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Go ahead. Uh, I will be in the same position even though uh, in the Ashtanga po Asana. Ashtanga Namaskara? Yeah, Ashtanga uh, Namaskara. So, so, for example, from... Ashwa Sanchalana, inhaling, right? Correct. After inhale, I say left without saying exhale, right? So the plank posture is with a full inhale and you hold it just a bit. Okay. And then you exhale with the knees dropping down, chest going down to the chest. The problem that you are saying might come is from Ashwa Sanchalana, inhale, when you say left, as you take the left foot back, let us say, you start exhaling, then naturally you need to inhale for Ashtanga Namaskara. Correct, correct, yes. This is what happens. So, um, there is a little bit of holding of breath. Okay. In fact, you, in Ashwa, um, 
uh, Ashwa Sanchalana, you have full breath, inhale. And then I say, take the other foot back. And now you're still holding the breath. And then you fully exhale and fully relax in Ashtanga Namaskara. Yeah, in that uh, actually matters, Jay. Like in, uh, inhaling and exhaling in plank and Ashtanga will be a slight uh, difficult for me. Yeah. I think by and practice it if, will. If you're forced to exhale in plank. Yeah. Don't worry, inhale again in plank okay. and then exhale Ashtanga. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, if you go out of step, return to the synchronized way that we, we, we've been practicing so you can match up. Okay. That is That happens in any of the postures. For example, I say Adho Mukha exhale, right? And then inhale Ashwa, right? Correct. But in Ashwa, uh, um, sorry, Adomka itself, you might feel like you need another breath. Yeah. Take a breath. Okay. But then always inhale as you bring the right foot forward or left foot forward. Yeah, Akila? Okay, okay, sure. Jay. Try that. Yes. Yeah, Sanjay. Yeah. So, Jay, earlier I was doing uh, Urdhomukha instead of uh, Ujanga. Yeah. So, like uh, with your corrections last week, now I I, I just uh, thought I will share it with others because others also might be struggling with this. Yes. So, so when we are in Ashtanga, our toes are tucked in. Yes. So basically, when we are going from Ashtanga, so first thing we should do is we should release our toes, and now toes should be pointing back. Only then we can go to the Bhujanga. Otherwise, we will always go into the Urdhva Mukha. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yes, um, so that um, reminds us, yeah, reminds us to go to Bujanga. Always remember, uh, uh, in fact, we will practice some of that today. I had that in mind. Bujanga is a, a cobra. Uh, um, so think of the tail of the cobra. The tail of the cobra is your two toes touching each other, right? Pointing back. And then the cobra doesn't have the arms or palms to bring its head to bring its head up, <laughs> right? It uses its spine to come up, right? And that is the bujanga that we practice. Not that, uh, and we also talked about how you can after bujanga pressing the palms, straightening the elbows, mm-hmm. almost urdhva, and there we can inhale more. And then Adhomka exhales. And on Any other questions before we move forward? On sweating, I am yes. sweating even with six sets also. Morning I pra- practiced 12 sets, even then I was sweating a lot. And now yes. with six sets also, I am sweating a lot. Maybe it is because of the weather also. Awesome. People if they are in AC, they may not be sweating. But yes. if you are in normal temperature, people will sweat even with six uh, sets. Yes, also. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And sweating is not bad. Uh, yes. Sorry, I, I, if I gave that impression, that is wrong. This is also sweating I can see from his T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sweating is quite all right. It is, it is just that notion that only I have to sweat and then I feel good <laughs> is something that we don't really need. Um, uh, okay, Raghunath. Yeah, sweating is not bad. If you sweat, okay. that's okay. Okay, Jay. Also, oh, one more thing my teachers have said is when you sweat, let us say you have a lot of sweat in the forehead, right? Don't try to take wipe off the sweat and then take it out. If you are doing, if it's uncomfortable at all, you just kind of uh, spread the sweat um, either on the face itself or you can take the sweat and then smear the uh, sweat onto your arms. So see the sweat is for cool. It's the body is trying to cool down. Right. That's what sweating is for. And you don't get rid of uh, the sweat. So don't why some some people like do that and then and they feel good so much that they're sweating. (laughs) 
um, instead do do this or this right i hope you can see so if you're sweating and that makes you uncomfortable you can do or don't wipe off for the towel or something that is also getting rid of the cooling layer which is um, the sweat on your skin and you are getting rid of it with a towel and then the body has to sweat some more <laughs> to cool itself um, but let the sweat be there and if it is like running down your nose or something and if you're feeling uncomfortable then you can just smell it other questions observations yeah jay rashmi here yes rashmi yeah so in continuation of amita's question yeah. i was able to do it earlier without the knees bent Mm. But it was quite strenuous for me. Yeah. Uh, now, since you have just mentioned about bending the knee, and I could see that it is very comfortable for me. So, Good. what is advised? Is it to push ourselves a little bit because I was able to do, or uh, to take the easier, you know, posture here? Um, if you're practicing, um, do three rounds with the knees down and going forward and the next three rounds see if it gets easier hmm? as you practice on your own or even in this practice um, if it is a question of you warming up to be able to bring the uh, foot forward and again it requires a, a bit of a flexibility to be able to bring the foot forward in one step. And if you're not able to do that, don't feel bad at all. I'm, I'm repeating, right? If you're not able to bring the foot forward in one step, it is quite okay. There is no perfection. And so if it is a question of you warming up, you can um, try uh, to check if first few rounds do with the knees down and the second few rounds even for that, even after you warm up, you're still having difficulty. Go back to the knees down, continue practice. And you know, several weeks, months, years, maybe after that, maybe you, you would be able to do it. And see, the thing is, if there is a, a structural problem, I don't want you to force it. But if it's a functional problem, as you keep practicing, the functional problems will just go away. Sure, sir. Other questions? Uh, Jai, this is Nagesh. Yes, Nagesh. Uh, with the regular speed, right? With the Surya Namaskara, regular our class speed, right? So yeah. I used to take a lot of breath for every posture. Mm -hmm. Today's speed, like uh, very short breath. Which yes. one is better? Um, <clears throat> Good, really good question. If you're practicing on your own, breathe as slowly and as fully. And breathe out as slowly and as fully. Take your time. If you are practicing on your own. Since this is a group class, and I don't know which pace is good for whom. For example, even the pace that I set today might, some people might feel if they are like super athletic, you might feel like this is too slow. Or if they are too rajasic, they want to get it done quick. <laughs> um, it might feel slow and so, um, normally, right before this event, I usually say three rounds of Sri Namaskara at your own pace, right? Um, because I, I, there is no one particular pace that fits everybody. There is uh, no such thing. And so when you're on your own, when you're practicing, do it with full awareness of every breath as fully as you can inhale and all the sensations of a full inhalation. You don't have to struggle to see. I don't want you to try to breathe in six liters. <laughs> right? 
um, if you if you normally breathe uh, half a liter, go for a liter or two. Uh, without it should not be straining. Oh, I'm I'm bursting now, or I'm so completely exhaling that the next inhalation comes as a blast. If so, bro proper breathing is so that your inhalation and the, at the end of inhalation, the exhalation feels natural and normal, and at the end of exhalation, the inhalation feels natural and normal without any jerky or uh, so if you inhale too much there's so much pressure i say uttanasana from um, hasta uttana you have to like exhale with your mouth opening because there's so much pressure and that's too much of inhalation so um, normally when you do it on your own do it at your own pace um, but for this event, I'm trying to set a pace. So um, on average, we can do 24 Surya Namaskaras, like let's say in 30 minutes. And this will also, for people who are really wanting to do, get some workout out of this, can also feel that. Even though that's not really my goal here. But people, when they do 24 Surya scar and let's say in 30 minutes or less, it's a good aerobics. Thanks, Jay. Um, Sukhasana. Right foot on top, Ardha Padmasana. Take your right arm behind your back, left palm on the right knee, twist toward your right side. Finally, turn your head to the back. Straighten up your spine. Take your right shoulder further back. Keep your right arm close to the body behind, wrapping around your back. Use your left hand on the right knee to bring the left shoulder further forward. Deep breaths, five, four, three, two, one. Release the posture. Left foot on top, Ardha Padmasana. Left arm going behind you. Right palm on the left knee, twist to our left side, straighten up the spine. Left shoulder going further back and gently get your right shoulder to get forward with the hand on the knee, encouraging your right shoulder to come forward. Finally, look over your left shoulder, five, four, three, two, one, release, Shavasana.
Shanti, Shanti. Gently come out of Shavasana. Take your time. Sit up, spine comfortably straight. Take your hands back, catch the left wrist with the right hand. Left hand in Chin Mudra. Chin Mudra is index finger lightly touching the thumb, other fingers comfortably straightened. Inhale, growing taller. Exhaling, bending forward, thanking Mother Earth. Inhaling, come up. Rub your palms vigorously, generating heat. Massage your closed eyes. Gently blink your eyes open. Namaste. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you.